Mm-hmm. Hey, John from Wayland Speed again. We picked up a new machine to do some development, kind of build a series like we did with uh, Project 120 car. Uh, we've been, I mean, we've definitely released some tunes, but we haven't really pushed the players market that much. There obviously is some things that get in the way pretty early, um, like in terms of making power. The first one's obviously the clutch. And then the second one is the engines are a bit less capable than the X3 engines. Um, luckily, there's some guys that we've worked with that are getting the engine program up to where it needs to be. And then obviously, uh, STM makes some, some pretty nice clutches for these. So we're starting off with basically a bone stock machine. We, we picked this one up last week. It's a 21 model, has had like 30 miles on it when we got it. I put probably 20 miles on it this weekend, um, playing with it, seeing how, seeing if there's major improvements I can do in the tuning, um, getting a feel for how the clutching acts. Uh, in stock form and four wheel drive, it, it's pulling about 8,000 RPM, so we're gonna make sure that the dyno, we can load the car enough to get the clutching the same as to what it was in two-wheel drive on our dyno as to what it was four-wheel drive in the, you know, in the dirt in the field. Um, and, you know, I already have tunes built for these, so we're basically gonna go uh, completely stock, maybe four to five baseline poles, and then we're going to uh, put my flash in it and the last time I did one of these on our dyno, when I flashed it, we weren't, um, we were limited pretty heavily by the clutch. The engine speed on the dyno would flare up to like 9,300, 9,400, basically hit the rev limiter. Um, and that was kind of a limiting factor. At that time, there really wasn't much available for this. This was pretty early when they were just released, the 2020s were just released. So uh, we do know that there's issues with the secondary and the 21 model has a new um, secondary setup. So we're gonna take a look at that and play with it as we add some power, but um, the plan is to at least put an STM secondary on it right now after we do the tuning and flashing and try to get the factory primary to do what we wanna do. Um, and then they obviously, they suffer, I'd say they suffer from belt temperature issues uh, so that's another thing that we're gonna try to address with this one. The goal basically with this is to make it, you know, we got the four seat so we can cruise the family around and do a lot more trail riding. The X3s tend to be, at least our X3s tend to be a little bit more aggressive. Um, but I'd really like to make, like do a stroker, 300 horsepower trail machine. You know, that's, that's the goal. Uh, the 21 is kind of, you know, it's, it's gonna be in the same boat. And then obviously our race car is, is the crazy one that we, we take to the dunes. Um, but, so we're gonna do five poles back, you know, we'll give a little bit of cool down. We're gonna try to get a really good baseline for this machine. We're gonna do five back-to-back -back poles. Um, and then we're gonna flash it with our tune. That's the only thing we're gonna do. We're gonna do another five. Um, we're gonna, we might play with some belts, just a belt change. Um, with our flash in it to try to get engine speed to come down on the stock clutching. Um, and then we're just gonna kinda keep going down the line. So this will probably be, I guess, a pretty long series getting it to where we want it to be. So uh, yeah, we're gonna, we're getting prepped now. We added the wide band. We added the, um, basically the dyno's boost gauge to it so we can monitor that. We took a bone stock flash, saved it as a DGT in the, um, in the power vision so we'll get all the data pulled from the ecu but it's still a stock tune and then um, basically engines we're, we're going to try to get good engine speed we'll have boost pressure and we'll have uh, air to fuel ratio You know, one thing about our dyno is we don't have wheels to have to like play with or deal with, I guess. Um, we bolt directly to the hubs. So we get to see, you know, engine speed and power um, 
basically direct. We don't we don't have to deal with it. So you can kind of see the engine speed comes up pretty quick. Um, so we're only showing, you know, basically 43 horsepower put to the hub at 8200 RPM. This is, I mean, this tends to be belt slip is like coming into it a little bit. Um, and then everything kind of catches up and we're transmitting the power to the hubs. Um, so our numbers definitely will be a little bit higher because we're not rotating, you know, 100 pounds and wheel. So, I mean, that's, that's a no brainer there. That's like we're wasting power that spinning 100 pounds in, in a wheel. So uh, pretty consistent in this area, but the engine speed, so like on blue, um, actually let me pull this, this one up a little bit. So the engine speed gets really goofy up top. Very goofy. Um, let me delete off everything but this one. So it's a little bit higher than what I was seeing um, on trail. I think I was seeing like 80, 58,000. So we're 8,100 on here. Um, but I probably, I mean, I, I mean, I was definitely like cruising pretty fast. So this ends at 850 axle RPM on a 30 inch tire is about 75 miles an hour. So you can take half of that. You know, we start the poles at about roughly 10 miles an hour, maybe a little bit more. So 10 miles an hour to 70, you can see down here, you know, 75 or 77. So I was cruising, you know, 30, 40 miles an hour. So it was about eight, it wasn't too bad. But you could see this right here, this is clutching. Unless the engine isn't happy, like the, the engine speed going up and down is definitely in the clutch. So CVT almost always acts like this. We'll make peak power through the clutch right in the beginning, as early as you can start the pull. As the clutch shifts, we lose power. This is a super common shape to it. Um, We'll pull up boost. So this is a factory tune. It's basically requesting, it's bouncing in between 17 and 18 and some change. It actually spikes a little bit high here. That's like kind of some feed forward stuff. And uh, Lambda, so this is air to fuel ratio. It actually comes in a bit lean there, 12-2, 12-3, 12-2. It'd be interesting to see what the ECU is demanding versus, so these, these cars have an O2 sensor that would read just like the dyno does, like an actual air to fuel ratio. And the ECU is full-time closed loop, so it's trying to achieve this number. Um, the one thing is I'm sure, well, I guess I'm not certain, but if you have a lot of pressure in the pipe, the air to fuel ratio reading is gonna be slightly inaccurate. So they're like, um, you would normally have, in certain situations, you can have an exhaust pressure sensor, like where the sensor is located, you also have an exhaust pressure sensor. And then there's some compensation that's done on the background to come up with true air to fuel ratio. So we're measuring exhaust in the tailpipe where there's no pressure. The, the, oh, the factory ECU may be, may be requesting 11.8. Um, I actually haven't dissected this tune in a while. Let's say the ECU is requesting a, a slightly richer mixture, a lower number. It, it, that number might be skewed because there is a lot of pressure built up in that pipe. That's something to, to note, and it would be more notable if you have a more free-flowing exhaust. So, I mean, obviously this thing makes some pretty damn good power, 178 horsepower, you know, and 178 horsepower to the hub. Um, we're not spinning the tire. That's another huge thing that can skew your numbers. You, if you're trying to dyno, like say on some stock carnivores, you can clearly see that there's not a lot of contact patch on the roller so it'll skew your numbers a little bit 
So um, we're going to, I'm going to put my tune in it. We're going to flash that. We're going to see what it does. I would imagine that the power curve is going to look even goofier because I think we're inter we're getting into some clutch, some belt slippage or some clutch issues already on a stock machine. So uh, we'll flash that. We'll do three to four pulls on that. And then um, uh, we might try the belt trick. We'll see how that goes. Flashing these, really simple. In case you guys haven't already seen. We have the stock tune. We have my tune. And then we have the true stock file. So this is the one with the asterisks that we're running, which is basically just a stock tune with a .stk. All we did was save it, and then it makes it a DJT so we can actually get the data off of it. So we're gonna flash it with this. So obviously with nothing more than the 10 minutes to flash the machine, we picked up about 20 horsepower. Um, boost went up to 21 and a half. It does get a little freaky out here. And I'm gonna dig into that a little bit more. Uh, engine speed, this clutching seems to be working a little better versus the old stuff I had. So we're at 8,600, 8,500, 8,500. 8300 and then it gets a little goofy up here so um i mean it's it's holding it it definitely is not goofy until the clutch is shifted out really far so i'm going to uh, take a look at the data logs from stock to now and see if there's anything we can do and then we're going to try our belt all right see what that does so yeah up there holy shit yeah look at this like the slip on the way up how much more power it made on the way up and then it just gained power everywhere like huge gains up top fuck it picked up 30 horsepower at the end now I'm, I'm, I'm lying when I say that it put 30 more horsepower to the ground. The engine's not making any more or less horsepower. Just from changing the belt or just change springs? Or just anything? belt. That was it. Just the belt. Yep. I still think it's slipping up top though. Seems like it needs a stronger secondary spring to hold that yep. shut. Clamp it. 